Hey, welcome back, everyone, and I hope you're all doing well. If you're new here, I live full time in my foreigner, travel around the country, taking landscape photos and making videos like this one, which is why I'm sitting here at a park bench in Watkins Glen State Park. So if you're into taking photos of waterfalls or landscape photography or just want to join me along for my journey, make sure you subscribe down below. But no pressure there. Today, we're going to be talking about the generative fill in the new Photoshop beta. Now, I was actually going to wait to make this video until it fully came out, but there's been so many headlines about this completely changing photography and everything that we know about photography and editing that I wanted to give it a try for myself. So is it actually going to change photography? Um, probably not, but it does some really, really cool stuff. So let's dive in and talk about it. Now, before we dive in, I was actually going to film this whole video right here, but it's currently not enabled. The generative fill feature in Photoshop beta is not enabled. I'm tethered to my phone. I have access to the internet, which you do need for it to work, and it's not currently working. So we're gonna have to continue this video somewhere else. So uh, let's go do that. And uh, I gotta get away from all these flies anyways. <laughs> Okay, so welcome to my office and my bedroom and my living room. Now, the reason I wanted to make this video is because it felt like all the other videos I was watching were really leaving out really important details. So they would generate a fill stuff and then never zoom in. And I'm like, okay, well, the, the photo looks fine on YouTube, zoomed out on a low resolution photo, but what does it actually look like zoomed in? So that's what we're gonna take a look at now. And then we're gonna talk about the things that I think are even better. So. Right now, currently generative fill is limited to 1024 on either side. So that means that if you generative fill or create something in AI, the largest pixels it's going to be is 1024. And that's pretty small in the world of photography where I'm dealing with an image that's 8,000 by 6,000 pixels. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's go in here. Now you can tell there's a little vulture here. So let, let's just go down here. Let's lasso and let's try to add an eagle in. Let's put generative fill flying eagle generate. Uh, and let's see what it generates. Now, I've already done this, so it's going to give me different things than it did before, but I have a feeling if it gives me anything similar to what I had before, uh, it means that it's not going to look great. So this doesn't look too bad. What the heck is that? That looks like a Pokemon. <laughs> So this is the thing, is that when I would watch other videos, they'd be like, oh my gosh, look, it's connecting, it, you know, it looks like it's even got some of the lighting capabilities, and it's the way the light's happening in the image, and look how great it looks. But anytime I zoom in, I'm just like, okay, what, what, is, what is going on here? Like, uh, none of this is mixing with the actual image. Now, this one actually doesn't look too bad, but realistically, it kind of just looks like a watercolor. And you can keep doing this over and over again, and it doesn't look great. So any any video you watch where they're trying to add things in, um, take it with a grain of salt. Now, let's do a generative fill of something that's a little less, you know, specific like an eagle. And let's see what we can do by adding, let's say, some mountains to the top of this image or some clouds. Because I think overall this is a completely unedited image straight out of camera. But I really feel like that day was really lacking some atmosphere and things going on in the background. So just lasso tool, come down here, select, and I'm making sure I have a little bit of selection over my actual image. Uh, and let's just do a, well, let's just, let's just make it super simple, mountains. And let's generate some mountains back here. I'm gonna let that do it. Do, 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 do. It's very hot in here right now. Uh, in New York. I don't know if they're going through a heat wave and stuff, but I did not expect it to be this hot already. Now, that <laughs> that looks awesome. Uh, let's check out the other options. That one's even cool. And okay, that one's a little bit too a little bit too much maybe, but what's really interesting when we look at this is how it blends basically the color and the atmosphere and what is already there in the image. So let's take a look at this one before we zoom in. And notice that the trees over here in the, the closer to the foreground, uh, the detail in those trees is really nice. You can tell that there's some light on here, 
But in our original image, let's just turn this layer. Oop, I forgot my shortcuts don't work in the beta because I didn't transfer them over. And you notice that the further we get away from my camera, there's more and more haze and atmosphere between me and the image. And what's really nice about Generator Fill is it copies that. Like you can tell the further and further we get away from what is currently there, it's already got haze. It's got things that naturally would be there. And to be completely honest, this zoomed out in the image looks fantastic. But as soon as we zoom in, as soon as we zoom in, uh, you can tell the difference in quality here. So obviously this is the original image and this is what it generated, which to me is basically unusable. So, oh, again, my shortcut doesn't work. So this is the original, this is <laughs> the generated, and that is because it can only generate up to, like I said before, 1024 by 1024 pixels. Now I did happen to stumble upon a video that talked about a way around this, where you only make a, a square marquee tool that's 1024 by 1024 on each side, and you fill it in little by little this way. Um, but that, that I, I don't think that's where we're at. I think that right now the best thing to do is probably wait until they get better with generating larger scale images. I'm not entirely sure it's going to work with their assets and the libraries that they're basing the AI off of. But for right now, I think what's important is that when we're zoomed out like this, the way it's matching the colors, the way it's matching the type of trees and everything of those of that nature is really good. Also, something to keep in mind is, I mean, this is roughly the size of the image you would see on Instagram. So I could easily use the generate fill here and create an image for Instagram and really no one's going to be the wiser, right? So like that's the big takeaway as well is that if you're just posting to social media and you need something quick to turn what I think is a you know, a really a decent image, um, cool composition, but isn't quite there to, you know, 10 seconds of, okay, wow, I've got mountains in the background, atmosphere. Uh, sure, we're taking away from the authenticity of the location, but, you know, some people don't necessarily care about that. Um, it's doing a really good job, and I think this is impressive conceptually as a, as a piece of, you know, to show how well it can match the light and match the atmosphere in the image. Now, let's delete that. And something else I played around with is, let's say I wanted to just remove this bridge. Because to me, this is where generative fill is incredible right now. Now, it's not going to do it with this image. I'm just going to click generative fill and not put anything in the prompt. What that usually does, in my experience, is just automatically removes or detects what we're trying to remove. Here it's going to detect, oh, this bridge is what this person is trying to remove. Let this finish. Now, that looks pretty good. Uh, uh, and we obviously, again, we have different options. Uh, it's always going to give you these three options, and you can just keep doing it if you don't like any of the options. I think this one looks pretty good. So on and off. Now, once again, oops, not the lasso. Let's zoom in. What you're going to notice is it still has that quality difference between our original image and our filled layer, as you can tell. But you'll notice because our selection was so much smaller pixel-wise that that 1024 is less limiting. And what you could do in this case is make smaller selections and fill it in. But even when I was doing that, I still had some problems here and there. But the quality is much higher in this way, especially if you're only using small fills. So now that you get an idea that you can remove that bridge really easily, let's do a small fill. Let's just remove this vulture from the image really quick. Generate. Now this is a small selection. This should not be hindered by that 1024 limit. And the things that should fill in this spot should look very seamless with our original image. And yeah, uh, aside from this little spot that I think I missed in my selection, that's um, that's looking basically the same in quality. Uh, very similar, maybe maybe just a little bit less, but it's really close. And the thing to keep in mind here is let's let's compare it to what I used to do, which is just go to the healing brush, or actually, if we really want to get down to it, we go in here and go to content aware fill. And let's just hit OK. 
and that's what it created. Now, this doesn't look too bad here, but again, this is a pretty easy content to wear. Obviously, you have this line here, and I would touch that up, but this is a pretty easy image to content to wear or item to remove from your image. Let's do something a little harder. Let's get out of this. I'm going to open this image from just a candid shot that I took of a friend's wedding. And I'm not a people photographer, not a wedding photographer. I just happen to have this image and it worked really well to show you this. Now, if I wanted to come over here and try to content aware this person out of the image, it's, <laughs> well, first of all, it's not going to look good. And second of all, it's going to require so much work for me to come in here and possibly stamp tool from one dress to another dress and over here and all of that to the point where it would just, I wouldn't even try it. Uh, it would spend way too much time on an image ever doing that. But if we use the new generative fill, if I come down here and select around this person's head, go to generate fill and just hit generate. Do, 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 do. Okay. W what? <laughs> what? Okay. It looks like I may have left. Oop, again, why does it do that? It doesn't switch to my zoom tool fast enough. Uh, it looks like the, I left a little bit too much of the blur on the top, but can we just talk about, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, this, is, uh, I mean, look, that's just the first selection. We should try this one. Okay. That one, obviously no. And that one probably not. So this first one looks pretty good, but I could just do this again if it doesn't look great. But I mean, remember, none of this dress was down here. And what is seamless is just, I mean, I can't even show you on the screen, but I'm hoping you're seeing it. It's just how well it's handling color matching. And the other thing you notice here is because that selection was small enough, um, there's really not a huge quality loss. Like obviously there's some grain and texture on the left side here compared to where it wasn't before, but damn, if that's not, if that's not pretty close, uh, and that's how quick and easy it was to just fix this image and other things to pay attention to is the details matter, right? So like her arm being fixed here and it looks pretty natural. There's some black in the background, but these are little things we could touch up uh, very easily in the actual edit. And to me, this was extremely impressive. Okay, so I have one more example to show you of an actual, you know, landscape image, an actual image I'm working on from the waterfall, from this episode. And it's that when I was taking images, uh, there's some people here. Now, what I used to do is I would create a new layer. I would come in here and I would healing brush by pressing J, come down here and see what happens. Now, that looks okay. I could get away with that or I would come in here and content aware. Now let's try it over here. Uh, that looks okay. Again, can probably get away with that. Now let's come over here. Some of these I would have to play around with a little bit more. Okay, this one's gonna be a little bit harder because her hand is on, or this person's hand is on the railing here uh, and they're moving so they're taking up more space. Yeah, none of those are working. So I could come in and content aware and lasso tool it that way but let's let's just see what happens oh, let's keep that layer so we can take a look let's turn it off though let's just see what happens when we lasso tool that person and use generative fill and just hit generate did it did did it did okay uh yeah this is where it's incredible and again we have three different versions <laughs> i i don't know what's going on um that look never mind both of these look great like again person keeps the railing there and you would never ever know that i generated filled that so let's make it even harder let's go down here you see there's some people behind this waterfall and again if i turn this layer on and i came in here and tried to let's say spot healing brush this uh, yeah, I could get this. Um, it would take me a lot of time, but the problem is I want the water and the four, uh, you know, I want to keep the water. So maybe I'd come in here and use the clone stamp tool and whatever. And I, I could maybe make do, but it's a very difficult image because I have all this water in front of these people. So 
let's try just removing this person with generative fill. Generative fill. Generate. Here we go. Do 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 do. do, do, do. Now you can tell I kind of overlapped here just a little bit, and maybe I didn't need to overlap that much. Um, if I were to do it again, maybe I'd do that less. But right now we're just kind of fast. Oh my god. Okay. I just it it even has water splashes here. Let's check out a different version. Okay. Um, that that just looks. I mean. It, it gets everything. And again, there's no image quality loss here. All of the stuff that it's generating is the exact same. I mean, I'm zoomed into 500% here. Um, so there is no, you know, I'm keeping this at a distance. We are zoomed in pretty much to almost the pixel level here. And the stuff that it's generating is pixel to pixel perfect to my original image. Uh, and this is a great example of how strong this tool is. Now, maybe it's a little bit too dark right here, but the simple fact that it keeps the water, it keeps the motion coming down from the top, and it aligns them with the original image that's there, to me, is extremely impressive. This is the kind of thing that I probably would have to spend, one, a lot of time on, and two, never really get quite right, but it's so far away in the image that you probably would never see it. And... Um, yeah, I mean, you just watched it. I didn't, everything you just watched, I did not do twice. I, I did it once. You saw the actual results the very first time. And that, to me, is how impressive it is. And this is where its current technology is really, really useful right now. Am I going to go over here and add some bats to the bottom of this cave? Not quite yet. Uh, but being able to just remove stuff and fix things like this uh, has real-world uses, and I'm actually going to use it on this image. So I hope that was a prime example of exactly what you can do with this tool right now, and I'm not using hyperbole here. Yeah, incredible. All right, so that's pretty much going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts and insights into generative AI in Photoshop. I really think that hopefully in the major release, not in the beta, they're going to have larger assets than that 124 on either side, so that if we do fill things in in larger pixels than that, we get much better assets so that things are more seamless. But even now, just being able to remove stuff like we did in this video is a game changer. And not only did it enable me to do things that I couldn't before, uh, it also just saves me time. So anyways, I am hiking to this waterfall. Hope you enjoy. Like I said before, if you're into this kind of content, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss the video where I'm taking the photo of this waterfall. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. It's gotta be a rainbow out there somewhere. There's actually gonna be one at this waterfall. Stay tuned for that if you're into that. I'll see you on the next one. Later. Get off there, ant. Oh my god, what the hell is that? Get out of here.